To understand programming paradigms, we have to understand what a paradigm means. A paradigm is simply a pattern or model in which we try to accomplish a task. It's just a style. So if you have one way of getting the job done, somebody may have another way of getting the job done, a different style, a different paradigm, a different pattern or model in which they get the job done. Whether it be, let's say, if I'm a financial guy trying to come up with a model or a pattern to get me super rich on the stock market, however frivolous that may be. Or maybe there's different paradigms with religions, for example, different moralities, different ways and different styles. So you've got different patterns or paradigms of morality, if you will. Well, we have programming paradigms. We have a way in which we can write our program. And we have quite a few ways to write our programs, different styles in which we can write our programs. So let's take a look at a few major paradigms. First of all, we have assembly. Assembly is one of the most basic paradigms. Now we started out with writing assembly programs in ones and noughts. Now don't forget, this is a paradigm, it's a model, it's a way of doing things. This is the lowest level, writing in ones and noughts, and most people don't do this anymore. But this is assembly. However, there is another higher level to the assembly paradigm. The higher level is in fact where the first generation languages came out, the first types of programming languages came out that allows us to write in human readable syntax. And what we did was we created instructions, line upon line upon line. You can look at this style as like a shopping list of instructions, just one whole big shopping list of instructions. And it's line upon line, precept upon precept, instruction after instruction. This is an assembly type paradigm. And of course, you can use this paradigm in modern languages. Modern languages allow you to write a command after a command after a command. But when we're trying to create large scale applications that require a lot of user interaction, well, we need something that's a bit more modular. And this one is called procedural programming. Now, procedural programming is where we have subroutines. What are subroutines? They're functions. They are simply a set of instructions that we run, subroutines. You know what you do when you do a routine. Well, let's say when you wake up in the morning, you make a cup of coffee. Well, you have a subroutine inside of your mind that's make a cup of coffee, for example. And you run through that subroutine in your head. And of course, you get a lovely Nescafe coffee at the end of it. So the whole point is that is more modular. We can break our instructions down. Instead of having line upon line, precept upon precept, we break it down into smaller chunks and then we can run those subroutines at a later date. This is procedural programming. Now procedural programming can modify variables and change the state of the program and so forth. But then also what we have is functional programming, the functional paradigm. Now, this is a little bit different. You may be going, well, hold on a minute. You told us about procedures and subroutines and how subroutines are functions. And you told us about this. Well, yes, because in this type of program, procedural, your functions can change the state of the application, modify data structures and so forth. But functional programming is a little bit different. We treat the functions as if they were values. It's purely functional, meaning we don't really try to change the state of a program. So a good example of this is a mathematical equation. Let's say we have a maths application and so forth. And all we're doing is we're going from one subroutine to maybe another subroutine to another subroutine. And eventually, after all these subroutines run, it just gives us a value out. So for example, a good calculator application or something of a kind, where we're treating the function as if it's a value. It keeps re returning a value and we're just doing function calls after function calls after function calls. And this is a nice, robust way of writing programs. But please don't assume that procedural is the same as functional. That's a common misconception and it's actually not true. And finally, we have one that's called OOP, or Object Oriented Programming, or you could say Object Oriented Paradigm. 
This is a little bit different and you may have heard of this, this is a very popular way of writing programs. Object oriented programming allows us to create and obviously build objects but what it is is our programs orientate around objects. Whether we create those objects manually or whether we dynamically create those objects and I'll come on to this at a later date. We have our programs orientating, modifying and working with objects, nice object-like structure. And of course our programs need to resemble the real world. Our programs may need to resemble stock in a warehouse or products that are being produced. So we do need object orientation. But I find that there are certain individuals who tend to go one way or the other. But I say no. Make sure that you as a programmer stay open-minded to working with any one of these paradigms. No one paradigm suits the problem. So for example, you need to look at what your application is doing. If it's doing something incredibly simple that really doesn't need subroutines or functions, then you could just go with assembly. And if you wanted something that's a bit more modular, you need certain subroutines, instruction sets, for example, you want to resemble somebody waking up in the morning and opening the fridge and making breakfast and making a cup of coffee and so forth. We have all these different subroutines, procedural, different sets of instructions that can change the state of the application and modify variables and so forth. And then also you have more functional style programming, which is more for analysis and mathematics, whereby we're treating the function as the value in a way. And then finally we have object orientation. If I'm writing a program for a warehouse to keep an inventory of all the products in the warehouse, then I will go with object oriented programming. But also you have something called multi-paradigm programming languages. Now these allow you to mix and match. You can go with any style you would like and your program doesn't have to be all OOP or all functional. For example, this warehouse, let's say, that's selling stock, well, I need to do OOP for the stock and so forth, but let's say they want to do analysis. They want mathematical formulas and algorithms to find out what products are doing well, and you'll find in big companies, they want to do this like Amazon. They love their logistics and all the rest of it. So they need to do lots of mathematical equations. So at this point, I would go with functional programming. And then let's say we have a user interface. Well, there's only one user, one user interface. And let's say I go with procedural because the user is going to click a button over here or click a button over there. Different subroutine for this button and a different subroutine for that button. So maybe I'll go for procedural in that case. So you see how you can mix and match these paradigms to come up with the best solution to deal with the creation of your application.